Ready up. Kunye. Jumbi. We're going to start out with basic horse stance punches. It's a great way to start if the, the legs and the arms working. Step out to a horse stance. Make sure your pinky toe is pointing towards the front of you. Your knees stay bent. Your back stays straight. You lean forward just a little bit. Extend one punch out, other one on your waist. On my count, you can go down just a little bit. Come Much. Yesterday we talked about turning the fist over at the end. Make sure you do that. Ready? One. <laughs> Breathe out when you punch. Two. <laughs> Stay relaxed until the moment of impact. Three. <laughs> Four. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Don't let your hand drop down. Keep it shoulder level. Six. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Ten. Put your hand up just a little bit and bend it at 120 degrees. Don't bend it so much that it's in front of your head like this. That'll work for something coming straight to your forehead, but something coming down will still bonk you on the head. You want to be in front of your head and higher up, 120 degrees in your elbow. Almost like it's straight up, just a little bit bent. Ready? Other hands on your waist. On my count, drop down, rise up just a little bit, drop down, and high block. Ready? One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Come back to Jim B. Check it. Kunye. Good. Let's do some kicks now. Jim B. Take one leg, sit it back behind you. As I repeat in every single one of my classes, because I want everyone to remember. In a front stance or a walking stance, front leg is bent, back leg is straight. Toes point in the direction you're going as much as possible. You're not on a tightrope. Your, your legs are apart like this on train tracks. Your back heel should be down unless otherwise specified. Hands up. On my count, back leg, you need two front kicks. Down. I always start with two front kicks because if you just do one, then a lot of people don't remember to rebend. If you do two, you'll definitely have one good one because you can't do a second one unless you rechamber the first. So, back leg double front kick. I'm gonna turn the side on so we have a bit more ambiance. Ready? One. Back. Two. Three. Come back to a good front stance every time. Don't just stand there like this. Keep the hands up the whole time. We're developing stance, we're developing technique, we're uh, increasing the strength in our leg our hip, and we're stretching a little bit. So I don't want you to kick super high, just you know, comfortable level. Ready, seven, eight. Go at every speed that works for you with the kicks. Nine, 10. Good, hop change and switch legs. <clears throat> On my count, back leg, two front kicks. Hands up, ready? One. Two, three, keep your hands up, four, don't do this, keep them here by your face, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, good, stepping forward, Jumbi. Now, face sideways. Take your back foot and point in the direction you're not kicking. So if I'm going to kick this way, I'm going to take my other foot and pivot this way. So my right foot is pivoted, I'm going to kick with my left foot to the left. My hands are up. We're going to do round kicks or turning kicks. You pick up the left leg, bend, straighten, bend, down. But since we're working on this thing, I don't want people to straighten their leg and put it down straight. Or pick up the leg straight, bend it and put it down. So to make sure you get it right, we do doubles. One, two. You can't do two kicks unless one of them is correct. So you're gonna get the, the correct chambers before and after the kick for at least one of your two kicks. Ideally both. Hands up. Ready? One. Two. Keep your hands up. Don't let your hands drop behind your butt or hang down by your legs. By your face is where they belong. Not even your chest, your face. Three, 
four. Get hit in the head, could knock you out. Someone clips your chin, knocks your brain against your skull, you could black out. Keep your hands up by your face the entire time. 35. Six. Seven. Don't lose your pivot. That foot should be pointed this way. Ready? Eight. Kick this way, pivot this way. Nine. Look where you're kicking. Ten. Good. I'm changing. Other side. Pivot your foot. Hands up. Now my right leg's going to kick when my left leg's pivoted. Ready? I'm going to do it towards the camera so you guys can see better. But keep your orientation however you are. Ready? Front leg, double round kick. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Excellent. Jumbi. Get it? Good. Yeah. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to add a little jump. All right? So you're going to pivot your foot, hands up. We're going to do one round kick. Now, we're not going to jump high. We're just going to do a little jump and round kick. Now, I don't have a very high ceiling, so I'm not going to really put a lot of effort into the jump. And we're not super warmed up or stretched out right now. But I want you to be in the air and keep your hips turned over and hold your pivot. So go ahead and pivot your foot, hands up, front leg, one round kick, and try to finish it while you're off the ground. Ready? One, two, three. When you land, your foot should still be pivoted. Four, five, good. Let's do the other leg, ready? Pivot, hands up. One round kick with a jump. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Those were not my best. Good. All right. Now, put your arms out in front out like this. Keep your knees bent. Don't move your head. Swing your arms from side to side. Keep your feet planted. Let your whole upper body swing. Breathe out as you come around. Reach down in front of you. Bend the knees, roll up. Put your head to your lower back and arch backwards. Bend forwards again. Bend the knees and roll up. Arch backwards. Bend forwards. Bend the knees, roll up. And do your lower back. Arch backwards. One more time, bend forwards, then the knees roll up, arch backwards. Good, now, put one hand next to your ear, grab it with the other hand, pull, and lean that way. Other side, other arm up, grab the wrist, pull, and lean to the side. Good. Grab one leg, pull it towards your butt. Other leg, pull it back, towards your butt. Good, now, let's practice our splits, open the legs, hands down, slide as far as you can go, and then hold it there. For 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, <clears throat> three, two, one, zero. Go ahead and stand up. <coughs> Shake it out. Excellent. Should feel a little bit stretched out, less worried that you're going to pull something. And now, we do turning double round kicks. Jumbi. Take one leg, step it back, make a front stance, hands up. 
The back legs will come up, we're gonna do a front kick, and then pivot, round kick, put it back behind you. Front kick, round kick combination, stands up. Ready, for the back leg from a front stance. A good one. Toes, knees, tight rope. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Good. Up change. Same thing. Back leg, front kick, ground kick. Ready? One. Two. Your hands still up? They better still be up. Three. Turn those hips all the way over. Four. Come on, son. Do put some energy into it. Five. Good. Jimmy. Turn it up. Cunier. Let's get our bar kicks out of the way. All right? I want to do as many. I want to do these in almost every class. So, you use a chair, the wall, the back of a couch, a person, whatevs. White belts can use two hands. Colored belts, only one hand. Pivot your foot towards the wall, bar, chair, or person you're holding on to. Ready? Pull your knee to your chest. Aim your heel towards your target. Don't drop it. We're going to bust out 50. You can always do more. Just feel free to pause the video and then uh, do more. Remember, orange and green belts, 100, and so on. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 23, 24, 25, pull that knee into the chest. Don't let it dangle out here. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, more than halfway done. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, put it down. All right, that felt good. <coughs> Let's do the other side. Ready? Pivot your foot towards chair, ball, wall, wall, bar, what have you. Other hands up, make sure you pivoted. Standing foot, the big toe is pointed directly towards what I'm holding on to. I'm kicking in the opposite direction. Pull the knee to the chest, ready? Let's do it. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, almost done. Keep it up. 37, toes back. 38, 39, 40, 10 more. Keep that leg up. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, stay pivoted, 49, 50. Put it down. All right, nice. Now let's work on some basic blocking techniques. <clears throat> We're gonna review the uh, L stance muscle block first. So, Jimmy, step one leg back, make an L stance, bend your knees. Remember the back foot is sideways by the pinky toe line, the front foot is front from the pinky toe line. In fact, if I have my front foot touching the back of my back foot, Make a motor L out of my feet, and I put my heel where my toes were, and then my front heel where my toes were again. That's the correct foot position for the L stance. And you bend the knees and sit back. Both knees are bent. Now notice it's not huge, it's not this. 
This would be a fixed stance. When an L stance. Take your front hand, make a muscle like this. The arm should be bent at 120 degrees. So, a straight line is 180 degrees. A line coming straight up from that, like a T or an X. Not an X, a T. This would be 90 degrees. So, between here and here, I have 90 degrees. And here and here, I have 90 degrees. So, there's 90, 100, 110, 120. Right there is where our muscle block should be, our high block, our low block, our circle block, our knife hand blocks, our front, front leg in the front stance, back and front leg in the L stance, 120 degrees. It is a universal angle of power for your fist. The way I usually explain this is I say, somebody put their hand in like this, then I grab it and I pull it, and I tell them to stop me uh, when they can. So I'm gonna pull, and as soon as they, uh, they can, engage and stop my pressure. They always have uh, the best resistance at 120 degrees. 90 and anything, anything less, even 110. It still pulls, and then they, they always uh, stop me or give the most resistance 120 degrees. So that's the position that's going to be strongest for that joint. And it's also the closest thing that the human body can uh, generate to a circle. And our movements, though linear, are also circular. The hips are rotating, the body is moving down, up, down. Uh, the arm, though going straight out, is traveling in a circle towards the target with all blocks. Anyway, we're gonna work on the muscle block. Show me that L stance, front hand 120. Ideally, the knuckles should be the same level as the shoulder, not in front of your eyes, nose, or mouth. The other hand's in your belt. We're gonna cross the arms, muscle block. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Stay that stance. It's like you're tired, don't let it go straight. Go straight. Eight, nine, ten. Stop change. The arm cross should be straight out from your eyebrows, like this. Not way back here. Right here. Ready? On my count, same thing. One, two, three. So we're pulling down through the lats and the triceps. Four, five. This hand's pulling back to the belt. Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Good. Now make a front stance like this. Take your front hand and put up your muscle block, but a little bit higher to so the front of your nose. And this time we palm out. Like give someone a high five, closing your fist, and then straighten your elbow and wrist, and bending your wrist at 120. Other hands on your waist. So this is a front stance outer forearm block. L stance muscle or inner forearm. Front stance outer forearm or front outer forearm block. So you cross your arms the same way and block the outer forearm block. Ready? On my count. One, keep the elbow down. A lot of people have the tendency to put it out like this. That's wrong. You want to protect the ribs. Elbow down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Check your front stance. Make sure it's good. Front leg bent, back leg straight, toes to the front, no tightrope. Nine, 10, up change, other side. Put up your outer muscle block, other one on your belt. Same thing, cross, outer muscle. Check that stance. One, two, three, four. Swing it in a big arc like this. Don't let it come through the middle and shoot out. So we're not doing this. We're making a nice big arc outward like you're swinging a baseball bat. Ready, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, Jimmy. We're gonna put those together. <clears throat> Two classes ago, and a bunch before that, we worked on shifting from one stance to the next. So if I make an L stance here, the difference is the length, width, and toe position and body weight for the front stance. So I'm gonna pick up my front leg, look down, stomp, that leg, pick it up, shift it forwards into a front stance. Make sure your back toes swivel in the direction you're going. Now pick up your front foot again, look down, stomp. But when you see, when you stomp, that one picks up, shift back just a little bit to an L stance. So L, front. Shift back to L, shift forward to front. Shift back to L, shift forward to front. Good, shift back to L, good. So we're gonna combine the muscle block and the outer muscle block, or the inner forearm block and the outer forearm block. Put up your muscle, other hand your belt. Cross your arms, muscle block, Cross your arms, shift, outer forearm block, and then wait. 
When I count again, cross your arms, inner forearm block, cross your arms, outer forearm block. So shift back to an L, shift forward to a front. Ready? One. Two. Cross your arms back to an L, muscle. Cross your arms forward to a front, outer muscle. Ready? Two. Palm in, palm out. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Excellent. Up change. Let's go to the front stance out of muscle block. Cross your arms, look down stone. Pick that foot up, shift it back to an L stance, muscle block. Cross your arms, look down stomp, pick that foot up, move forward to front stance, outer muscle block. That's the sequence on my count. Ready? One, cross L, muscle. Cross front, outer muscle. Look down stomp, that's the only that moves. Ready? Two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and me. Pretty excellent. Now we're going to go through a sequence of movements from the green belt form. The very first three moves. So we're just going to practice those uh, together. So if you're not green belt or not working on 1-yo, or you're higher than green belt, it's still good to know the sequence. Because the patterns in Taekwondo are like uh, an unwritten encyclopedia of Taekwondo. Well, I guess it is written. But when you practice the movements, it's an internal record of all of the techniques and stances and transitions of Taekwondo. So you don't need an encyclopedia if you know the 24 patterns. If you know the 24 patterns, <coughs> You've got an internal record of all of the techniques and all of the minutia of Taekwondo. They're all within, within that. You don't need to use them in context. The double step, the spin, the step here, the step down, the shift, the slide, the fade, the, uh, the high punch, the middle punch, uh, <clears throat> the closed stance, the bending stance, the swivels, all of that are held within the realm of the patterns. So once you know all the patterns, then you know all of the basic techniques, of all, all of the basic and advanced techniques of Taekwondo, and they're at your fingertips. You've practiced them a bazillion times. So you can take them out of the patterns and use them in any way you see fit. Anyway, let's work on this, uh, this square block technique, or th this technique. So we're going to make an L stance. Now we're going to shift forward to a fixed stance, and then step down, we're going to hit the other side. We'll work one side, then the other, then we're going to put them together in a transition. So make an L stance. It doesn't matter which leg's in front. Now, in the last couple of classes, we worked on the square block. The back hand, the one touching the back leg, is the high block. The one touching the front leg is an outer muscle block. In this case, nose level, I believe. You're going to cross your arms, palms into your chest, square block. Let's do that three times. Ready? Cross, extend, open. Make sure the back hand goes on top. If you're not sure what your back hand is, put your hands down, look down. That's your front foot. The other one's your back foot. The hand touching the back foot is your back hand, high block with it. Other hand, outer muscle block. Ready? Two, cross, extend, square. Three, two. good, now open up your top hand into a chop. Keep your front hand closed in a fist. Take your front hand, like you're grabbing someone's lapel, and pull it into your shoulder. The hammer of the fist should touch the shoulder. The top hand swings around an arc, palm out, and then flips over at the end. So from the high block position, it comes around, kind of like you're rubbing a, a circular window as a mime, and then when it gets in front of you, flip it and chop with the inside here on the neck. Again, go back to square block, open your top hand, chop. Cross your arms, square block, open the top hand, pull him into your lapel, chop his neck. Good. So on my count, we do both of those. Cross, square, open, chop. Ready? One, two, three. Good. Now, the hand on your shoulder is a fist. The one extended is the chop. Which one will you punch with? Duh, the one on your shoulder, the one's the fist. Put the fist on your belt. Look down, stomp. That's your front foot. Move it forward. So it's the size of a horse stance. Bend your knees evenly. 
your feet are the shape of an L stance, but the, the size and weight distribution of a horse stance, 50-50. Now, take that fist in your belt, you're gonna punch with it as the other hand pulls back. So from here, good. Let's go back to the L, cross your arms, square block, open the top hand, pull your lapel, your, grab his lapel, pull it in, chop his neck, put your fist on your belt, shift forward to a fixed stance, punch. Cross your arms, shift back to an L, square block, open the top hand, Pull him in, chop. Put your fist on your belt, shift, punch. We got whole sequence on my count. Ready? One, square block, chop, punch. Now feel free to rewind back to the beginning of my explanation and go through that again, or just pause me and practice it uh, until you've got it down. If you have any questions, feel free to measure me and I'll answer, uh, message me and I'll answer them after I finish this set. Ready? Two, square, chop, punch. Three, square, chop, punch. Five, six, good. Two B, three. Let's do the other side now. Make your L stance, look down, stomp. That's your front leg. The hand touching that one is your front hand. That's your outer muscle. The other one is your high block. Cross your arms, extend, square. Cross your arms, extend, square. Open your top hand, the one over your head, the back hand. Front hand, grab a lapel, pull him into your shoulder, chop his neck. Go back to the square, grab his lapel, pull it in, chop. Back to the square, grab his lapel, pull it in, chop. Take the fist on your shoulder, put it in your belt. Look down, stomp, move that leg forward to fixed, punch with the belt hand. Cross your arms, move that front leg back to an L, square. Top hand open, grab a lapel, Pull them in, chop. Fist, not chop, on your belt. The fist on your belt is gonna punch as you shift forward to a fixed stance. Cross your arms, square block, open, chop, to the belt, shift punch. On my count, that whole sequence, ready? One, two, three, four, Five, square block, chop, shift, punch. Six, good, and your knee. Check it, Kunye. All right, so now I wanna work on hook kicks. We're gonna go back to the bar here, or a table or a chair, what have you. Hook kicks are one of the more difficult kicks to get. Once you know how to do side kicks well, hook kicks are just a slight variation. But the way it pulls through can really throw you off balance if you don't turn your hips over enough. Okay? And a lot of people do the hook kick cut short. They just pick the leg up and bend it. Like this. Which will work in sparring and that's fine. But it's not a full range of motion hook kick. If you want an in-depth explanation on my YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash Simon Sure, I have a Taekwondo hook kick tutorial where I cover in great depth, uh, like 10 drills you can do to develop the hook kick, and I break it down really small. Today, we're gonna break it down in four steps, and we're just going to practice it. So if you don't know how to do a hook kick, follow along, and if you don't get it, check out my uh, YouTube tutorial. I'll post it with this video after. Take your standing foot, pivot towards the wall, chair, or bar. Take that leg, pull it into your chest, just like you do a side kick, other hand up. Now we're gonna extend the leg out to the diagonal in front of you. Keeping it straight, pull it through in line with the hip. Bend the knee, but don't bring it forward. Keep the pivot. Then pull the knee back to the chest. This is the part that most people forget. Diagonal, pull through straight, bend, pull back. Do the whole thing on one count, ready? One, diagonal, pull through, bend, pull back. Two, diagonal, pull through, bend, pull back. Three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Put it down. Other side. Pivot. Chamber, knee to your chest. Butt towards your target, heel towards your target, arm up. Ready? Diagonal. Pull through. Bend. Pull back. Diagonal. Pull through. Bend. Pull back. The whole thing, ready? One, two, diagonal, pull through, bend, pull back. Three, 
four, five. Don't pull it back down like this. Keep it on the same level. Like there's fire under here and you don't want to burn your thigh. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Put it down. Good. Now, what I want you to do is make sure you have this much room next to you. We're going to the same sequence we did, square block chop punch, and we transition from one side to the next, just like in the green belt form. So make an L stance, square block. Down, up, down, chop, shift, punch. Take your front leg, step together to your back leg, cross your arms, step down, L stance, square block, top hand, chop, fist in the belt, shift, punch. Ready? Step together, step down, square block, Open the top hand, grab the bell, pull it in, chop, fist on the belt, shift, punch, step together, cross the arms, sit down, now stand, square block, open the top hand, pull him in, chop, fist on the belt, shift, punch. Ready? One. Square block, chop, punch. Step together, step down, square block, chop, punch. Two. Three, square block, chop, punch. Step together, cross your arms, square block, chop, punch. Five. Halfway done. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, Jumbi, Ready up, Kunye. All right, let's stretch. Now it's Saturday morning-ish, so you are probably stiff before class. You just woke up a little while ago. Stretching right now, you're not going to get as far as you normally would at the end of the day, in an evening class, or a late afternoon class. But it's still important. If you stretch in the mornings, your whole day will go better. Your body will feel better, yes? And even though it doesn't feel like it, you are improving your flexibility. You're conditioning your muscles to recognize that new length even when they're super contracted. I mean, right now, you warmed up quite a bit. So uh, make sure you always do a big warm up like this, starting with dynamic stretches before you go into a uh, more intense, uh, deeper stretch like we're gonna do, gonna do now. So kneel down, <laughs> nod the head forward and back. Should be uncomfortable, not painful. Turn it from side to side. Remember not to stop breathing. You feel like you're pushing a stretch. You're holding your breath to get further. You're, it's, it's counterintuitive. That's not working. Tilt your ear to your shoulder. Leave your shoulder down. Roll the shoulders backwards. Big circles. Now go the other way. Big circles. Bring one arm across your chest, grab it and pull it in. Keep the shoulder down, chest out. Good, switch sides. Sorry, I just have a, a pop up here. Keep stretching. Good, sorry about that. <coughs> Reach your hand behind your head, pat yourself on the back. Reach over, grab the elbow. Pull it back, keep the chin off your chest. Switch sides. Put your hands together, 
Lock your fingers together, push down and out. Lift up. Big circle stretch. Together behind your back, lift your hands up, lift your chest forward, like this. Good. Take your legs out in front of you. Take one leg, cross it over the other. So it makes a four. Push down on the knee. So bent leg hand, push down the bent leg knee. Take the bent leg hand, grab the ankle. Straight leg hand, grab the ball of the bent leg foot. Turn the foot in big circles. Good, now turn it the other way. Stretch the ankle and the foot. Now punch the foot, stimulate the nerves in the, in the sole of the foot. Good, give yourself a little foot rub. Get deep in there. Good. Now bend the toes forwards one at a time. Bring the pinky towards the heel, the ring toe, the middle toe, the pointer toe, and the big toe. Now bend your toes backwards. Try to make your toes touch your knee. Your big toe, your pointer toe, your middle toe, your ring toe, your pinky toe. Pull your toes apart. Try to do toe splits. In the next set, and the next pair, and the last pair. And try to pull your toes out. See if you can make them a little bit longer. Relax the foot and pull your toes in. Your big toe, your pointer toe, pull out your middle toe, pull out your ring toe, and pull out your last toe, your pinky toe. Oh yeah. Go ahead, now switch legs. Then the other one on top, put the backwards four from space. One hand on the floor, hand on the knee, bent hand on the bent knee, push the bent knee down. The straight knee should be straight. The toes pointed up. Good. Now that same hand, the bent leg hand, should grab the bent leg ankle. Straight leg hand should grab the ball of the, ball of the bent leg, foot. Ball of the foot of the bent leg. Turn that foot in big circles. <clears throat> Good. Go the other way. Yes. Punch the foot, stimulate the nerves. Give yourself a little foot rub. Get deep in there. Oh, that feels really good. Love me a good foot rub. Good. Bend the toes forwards one at a time. Pinky toe forwards. Ring toe forwards. Middle toe forwards. Pointer toe forwards. Big toe forwards. Toes back. Big toe back. Pointer toe back. Middle toe back. Ring toe back. Pinky toe back. Toes apart. One, two, three, four. Pull the toes out, make them longer. Pinky, ring, middle, pointer, big. Good. Put your feet in a circle, lie on your back. Hands behind your head, pull your chin up to your chest. Stretch out your neck and upper back. Don't forget to breathe while you're stretching. If you're holding your breath, you're doing it wrong. Good, sit up. Pick up one leg, cross it behind the opposite knee. So, my right leg is up, my left leg is in the bottom. Take your left hand, cross it over your right knee. Twist, push on it and twist and look over your right shoulder. Or your top hand shoulder. Let's switch sides. Put my left leg on top. My right hand goes across my body and pushes against my left knee. I'm gonna look over my left shoulder, push on my right hand, and twist. Rotating my vertebrae centripetally while maintaining a vertical axis on the spine. 
Breathe. Stick your legs out, hands and feet, and reach to both sides at the same time. Stretch. <sighs> Sit up. Put your feet in a circle. Pull your belly button forwards. As far as it will go. <clears throat> Breathe. Don't stop. I hear you're holding your breath. I want to hear you breathing. Kind of like we're in the same house, but you don't know I'm there, and I've called you on the phone from inside the house. It's like, I can hear you breathing, or something less creepy, but breathe. Good. Now take one leg and put it behind you. I want your heel to touch your butt. Like this. Put one hand on the side of you and walk your body back. Don't let your knee come up. Your heel should be touching your side. If it's not, you're gonna hurt your knee. If you can't do this, if you can't make your heel touch your butt and lie backward like this, lie on your side and do it this way. But if you can, lie backwards as far as you can go. When you're super uncomfortable, stop. If it hurts, you're going too far. If, you can, if your shoulders are on the floor, the next step is think about making the back of your belt, your lower back, touch the floor. You can get more leverage if you do this with your, uh, your other leg and push your, uh, your hips outward. But that's only if you're all the way down. Breathe. Switch legs. <coughs> Put my other leg behind me. Try to keep uh, the line from the shin to the big toe straight. Hands on the other side, knee on the floor, lie back. If your knee starts to come up, you can put your other leg on top like this to help keep the knee down. But if this happens, you're doing it wrong. Keep that down. Good. All right, sit up. Extend both legs out like this, as far as you can. Any, any range of motion is fine. Take your hands, put them in the center. Walk your body forwards like this as far as you can. Keep the toes pointed up. Good. Put your hands on one leg, walk those hands forward. as far as you can go. Remember, don't compare yourself to my range of motion. You might be going further. You might be going a lot less far. Doesn't matter. The goal is to go further than you did last time. So if you're the same as you were last time, you gotta be stretching more. If you're further than you did last time, good job, you did it. You achieved your goal. Now next time, do the same thing and go a little further than you were today. Other side. <laughs> but if you lost flexibility, then you need to be stretching a lot more. Shake your legs out, bring them in. Put your feet flat on the floor, about a shoulder apart. Come into a squat position, put your elbows between your knees and open your hips up. Good, now, I want you to go on all fours. Like this, like a doggy. Now, put your feet together like this. Now, keeping your hands right under your shoulders, slide your knees apart, and thrust your pelvis and your belt towards the floor. Like this. They call this the frog stretch, because it's kind of like a, the position of frogs in after they finish kicking. Arch your back upwards as well. Look up at the sky. Change angles so you can see better, or so I can see better. Good. Stand up. Now I want you to go on one knee, like you're about to be knighted. Extend your front leg out in front of you. Keep your back knee and foot where they are relative to your body in the room. 
One hand on either side of your front leg, not both on one side, one on each side. Slide the leg out as far as it'll go. Breathe. Good, now let's switch legs. Other leg up, kneel, back knee foot stay, extend, hands, slide. Good, bring it in. <coughs> extend your legs out to either side. Put your hands on the floor in front of you. Slide the legs out as far as they will go. <coughs> Into your splits. If you feel uh, pain, don't go that far. If you feel discomfort, good job. If you don't feel anything, go further. Now take your toes, stay there. Don't sit back to forwards and try to roll your toes up like this. Stay there for five, four, three, two, one, now put one toe down. Stay there for five, four, three, two, one. Switch, other toe up. One, two, three, four, five. Both toes down again for five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead and stand up. Turn it, Kunye. Tenets of Taekwondo, Sijuk. Courtesy, integrity, perseverance. Self-control, indomitable spirit, sir. Student oath, Sijuk. I shall observe the tenets of Taekwondo. I shall respect instructors and seniors. I shall never misuse Taekwondo. I shall be a champion of freedom and justice. I shall build a more peaceful world, sir. Face me, Chariup, Kunye. Face whoever is the highest rank in your class, Chariup, Kunye. You guys did an excellent job today. Thank you so much for tuning in. <clears throat> now, at the end of class, after bowing out, it's kind of become a thing in these classes, the last couple anyway, to do a meditation. So we do a really short Tai Chi Chuan breathing exercise and movement drill. So what you do is stand your palms down back, your feet together, your knees bent. Now shift all your weight to your right leg. Extend your left leg, point your toes and touch the floor. Slowly shift your weight over to that leg. This is about the size of your gym bee. Bend the knees lightly. Put the tongue on the roof of your mouth. Breathe in through your nose and slowly lift your hands. Pretend there's a string on the back of your wrists that's lifting them. Now, breathe out and extend your fingers really far, like you're reaching out. Keep your knees bent. Breathe in. And as you breathe in, drop your elbows and pull your wrists towards your body. Breathe out and point your fingers straight up. Breathe in and lower your hands, palms down, knees bent, and relax, lower your wrists. Let's do it again, ready? In, out, in, out, In, out. Keep the knees bent, tailbone forward. In, out. In, out. In. Out. Breathe into your lungs, fill them up, then breathe down into your stomach and diaphragm. One more time. Ready? In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. Shift the weight back and relax. I recommend doing more repetitions of that. It's a great drill to help you kind of develop your breath and to coordinate breath and movement. 
All right.